Ah, and we are live. Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We got a great show for you today. As always, we are live every single day at noon Eastern. If you want to watch live, head over to twitch.tv slash takes by fans. If you want to watch but not live, head over to our YouTube channel, Takes by Fans. We post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis. And if you just want to listen, we are on podcasting apps, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. So, however you want to watch or listen, we've got you covered multiple ways. Alrighty, today's a big old Sunday, folks. And man, oh man, oh man, the final two in March Madness has been determined by last night's final four games. And she, she, she. Are y'all understanding why we were like harping on y'all to watch that UNC Duke game last night? Oh my god. Goodness, what an absolute game. Back and forth, close, down to the wire, big time uh, deficits overcame, and all the teams do got down. Then they came back, and then UNC, UNC was down a little bit, a little bit for most of the game, at least for the most half, first half. And then uh, UNC came back, and then Duke came back, and then UNC said, nah, ah, ah, we're putting some nails in some coffins here, and UNC spoils Coach K's last ride, and man, oh man, Twitter was doing its Twitter thing last night, all the memes on Coach K and all that, and that's what sports is all about, folks, exactly what we got last night, the competition, the sports, the atmosphere, the fans' perspective, the game, and then the narratives, the memes after, it's just, that's what it's all about about folks man oh man so uh the final two is set and what do we got monday right we play tomorrow they all play tomorrow Almost sure it's tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, final two, March Madness coming in to an end tomorrow, which is why today is going to be a little bit of our cleanup show. We've got a folks, folks, folks. We, we've been talking about it the last couple of days here on the show. I mean, this catalog of stories is backlogged too much. We must take care of business today so we can move forward. March Madness is coming to an end. We've got playoffs in the NBA starting to start up. The regular season about to finish. we got about nine days left on that. So, we're going to have more time freed up in the show so we can do our draft prospects. So we can get ready for the NFL draft and all that. But, but, we must clear this backlog of stories. So, there was only like five games on in the NBA last night. We can quickly go over March Madness. And then the rest of the day is clearing this backlog. And we will not stop the show until all of these stories are done. Most of the stories that we're going to even be talking about, it's going to be nothing by now. Because we waited too long to talk about it. But we still got to get our kind of final two cents and all that and talk about it and still have it on the record. I need everything on the record. I need everything on the record so we can come back and show you, hey, we were right here and here and here. Were we ever wrong? Of course not. So uh, that's what we've got today. Clearing out our libraries of NFL stories. They just continue to pile up. We pile up. I mean, I think we added like three or four new ones because of what all the news that broke yesterday. But But let's digress a little bit here. Lots of stories to go over, and we will clear out our backlog stories today. So, we've got all that today on the show, so let's start here. Let's start with the March Madness, quickly break that down. Then we'll head over to the NBA. we got games tipping off at 1 o'clock, so hopefully we can talk about betting in the NBA by that time. And then the rest of the day is for the NFL story. So let's start off the show here with quickly recapping what we all witnessed last night in the Final Four of March Madness, and it was absolutely glorious. The first game up, Villanova in Kansas, and this is the one that we loved. We loved Kansas minus four. We loved the bigs of Kansas. And that was really the story. The bigs were dominating for Kansas. Yes, yes, the three points were flying very early and often for Kansas. But at the end of the day, it was really the bigs that were dominating Villanova. And that's why they can never get back into the game. And another reason why we did not want to bet on Villanova, even though that they were getting four points. And that was kind of our, our story of the tournament so far, getting the points when you can. But we stayed away from them because of the beef size in Villanova. They couldn't score. They only put up 65 points. That was another kind of knock we had on Villanova yesterday when we were determining what our bet was going to be and we ended up betting Kansas minus four and they led the entire game <laughs> from start I think they got up 11-0 11-0 run to start the game and it was done from there and it's unfortunate for Villanova 
So Kansas absolutely dominating Villanova, winning 81 to 65, and now having to go up against UNC on Monday, folks. Tomorrow it's going to be fantastic because UNC has some great bigs as well, and that was really kind of what won. And we really should have not bet on the narrative of that Duke game because we told y'all we only took Duke because of Coach K's narrative. But but UNC's bigs were absolutely dumb. It. I'm going to blank on this man's name and I truly forget, but uh, the big for North Carolina who kind of, uh, uh, he got a little banged up late in the second half and then came right back in, had to get kind of like carried off the floor, comes running back out of the tunnel and then re-enters the game. He fouls out a little bit later, uh, but overall he had like 20 boards. He had like 11 points, like 21 boards. It was absolutely phenomenal and that's what really kept UNC in at the entire game. The bigs, the offensive rebounds, the second chance points. It was all UNC last night, and Duke really had no answer for that down the stretch, and that ends Coach K's career. It does, I mean, this is a black mark on the man's resume, folks. Coach K. Losing against your biggest rival, first time facing this school in March Madness, final game of the year, final four, and you lay up a stinker at the end of the game where, I mean, the Duke, Duke was missing free throws after free throws after free throws late in the game. I mean, Coach K, you got to preach, make your free throws. What were you doing your entire career coaching-wise if you're not telling your players to hit free throws down the stretch, especially in a March Madness tournament game? What are you doing over there? Coach K. Uh, but UNC gets the better of Duke. The historic night, the historic rivalry reaches probably the the mountaintop. I don't know if we'll ever get a Duke-UNC game like this ever again, but y'all can keep trying. Absolutely. Let's keep up the rivalry after the coaches are gone and all of that. So, man, oh, man, what an absolute great way to end the Final Four of March Madness last night. Duke, man. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Got to shout out UNC. An absolute wonderful game. They're an eighth seed in the finals going against Kansas, and they're both going to have dominant bigs. I don't know which one I'm going to call yet, so tune in tomorrow when we make our official prediction and see what the line is and all that. But two great big teams right here. This is what we're betting next year's March Madness. The bigs. I don't care about our algorithm. I don't care about three-point shooting. I just want to know the bigs. And we're going to determine the winners of every single game next year in March Madness by the bigs. So the finals is set, folks. Nor uh, North Carolina, Kansas, tomorrow, final four, New Orleans. Let's see who wins it all. Alrighty, let's uh, move on and shift gears to the NBA now where we had five games on last night. We had two early games, three late games, and we got a little banged up in the early games. A lot banged up in the early games. We kind of made up for it in the late games. Jazz flounder once again, classic jazz. We'll talk about that when we get to that game. But let's start here first up with the Hornets at the 76ers and this was a huge must win game for the 76ers and really like a must win game, but also a little bit of a must die dominate game I mean let's get it going I mean it's the Hornets uh you know uh they're a solid team but when we're talking about the Hornets or the 76ers I think we can all unanimously say oh yeah the 76ers should win by like 10 yeah about at least 10 and uh, they won by more than 10 last night they won by 30 they win 144 to 114 and this was a close game all throughout close game at halftime it was only like a five point game at halftime and then the 76ers close out in the second half. We've never seen that by the 76ers team. So we're going to take it very, very slowly here by the 76ers because the last time we were kind of, you know, putting the 76ers team on notice and putting... Doc Rivers kind of, you know, on the true hot seat. We It took like one game for us to kind of overcome and kind of forget all those because George's Nyang was in the starting lineup and did good. No, no, no. We're not going to get swindled. We're not going to get hoodwinked by the 76ers team because they put together one great performance. We're going to need to see a couple of these strung along together the final nine days of the regular season in the NBA before we get to the playoffs if we're truly going to kind of believe in the 76ers team at the start of the playoff run, but this was a good first step. Well done to dominate, winning 144 to 114 last night. James Harden, 12 points, 13 assists, 8 rebounds. Classic James Harden game last night.
Joe LMB, 29 points, 14 rebounds, 6 assists, dominating performance there. Tobias Harris, 23 points, and that was all very well done. We need Tobias Harris to be this type of producer out there on the floor on a nightly basis. It can't just be Joe LMB and James Harden. We need Tyrese Maxey. We need Tobias Harris, and Tobias Harris truly stepped up last night. 23 points, 4 assists, 5 rebounds, shot, shot 5 of 9 from the 3 in 61% on 13 shots from the field. Fantastic. And then we had Tyrese Maxey. 19 points, 4 assists on 58% shooting. This is what we need from kind of the core four uh, that the 76ers have. And then off the bench, yes sir, we get Shake Milton 10 points, 5 assists, 4 rebounds. We get Georges Niang 10 points, 2 steals, 3 rebounds. This is what we need as well. Nothing big. I mean, we would obviously love something big, but we don't need anything big. We're not looking for anything big. We're not holding the 76ers team to something big off the bench. Solidly like this, two 10-point performers with the starters going crazy. Yes, this is what we need to see, and that's exactly what we we saw last night. Well done for the 76ers. Once again, we are re-updating our power rankings tomorrow on the show. And the 76ers truly just saved themselves of falling outside the top 12 here that we may cut down to the top 10. We'll see how we feel tomorrow on it. Uh, but 76ers dropping down to 10. This is a, uh, a, a power ranking save win last night by the 76ers. Well done of getting it done. And then for the Hornets last night, Metaman just did not really show up in the second half. LaMelo Ball, 13 points. That's not going to get it done. Terry Rozier, 10 points. That's not going to get it done. Miles Bridges, your leading scorer, 20 points for the entire game. That just is not going to get it done. Unfortunate. Gordon Hayward's first game back, 5 points. 16 minutes off the bench. Meh. Matras Harrell, 6 points. 2 rebounds. Meh. Kelly Oubre Jr., 11 points. That's even light for him. Meh. So, Hornets just cannot get it going, and that's what we know. The Hornets kind of live on the runs, and they were not able to run in the second half last night. They lose by 30, 144 to 114. All right, next game up here, once again, in the early window, Cavs at the Knicks, and that's what we get for betting the Knicks. Betting the Knicks with nothing to play for, what were we thinking, folks? I apologize for y'all. This one got me. I don't understand. I wanted just to believe in the Knicks because they were showing me something good. They weren't winning games. They were fighting at least to the end whistle. It was always the classic Knicks and all that, and it clouded my judgment a little bit, and I apologize to y'all for that. I took the Knicks last night, and they lose by 18. One 19-101 win for the Cavs last night. Cavs getting back on track. Love seeing that. One without Evan Mobley last night. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Darius Garland, 24 points, 13 assists. Absolutely love it. Moses Brown filling in for Evan Mobley at the 5, who's filling in for Jared Allen at the 5. Moses Brown, 16 points, 13 rebounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's Jared Allen. Ask. That's Evan Mobley. Ask. Oh, my goodness. This Cavs team. Team. Do they just have endless bigs out here? I love it. One big goes out, another one steps in. That big goes out, another one steps in. They they are they have no shortage of bigs over here with the Cavs. So maybe the Cavs win it all this year. Yeah, they've got the bigs to do it. So man, oh man, maybe they should be running five bigs out here. They may be able to win with that. And then we got Kevin Love, another big, coming off the bench. 15 points, 5 rebounds. Yes, sir. Karis LeVert, 19 points, 6 assists, 6 rebounds. So everybody on the Cavs that we needed to do their job did their job. And how can we talk about the Cavs without talking about C.D. Osman? 10 points, 3 assists, 3 rebounds on 33% shooting on 18 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Getting that great production from C.D. Osman again off the bench. Do not sleep on C.D. Osman, folks. Cavs getting back on track. Absolutely fantastically well done. We need some confidence boosters here. We need some wins the final nine days of the regular season for this Cavs team to kind of hit their stride heading into the playoffs here if the season ended today what do we got the Cavs first round matchup Let's quickly see Cavs, Cavs. Oh, man, they're in the playing tournament now. So, man, oh, man, uh, if they claim the seventh seed, they're facing the Bucs. Oh, you don't want to face the Bucs. If you get the A seed, you're facing the Heat. I feel like they want to face the Heat a little bit more. It's still not looking good optically for this Cavs team to be either the one or two seed, but uh, you definitely don't want to face the Bucs. I can guarantee you that. So, 
Cavs get the nice win here, building some confidence, and they get the win 119 to 101. But then we hit the final three late games of the night, and this is where we hit and should have hit. But the Jazz, folks, what are we going to do with the Jazz? But here we go. Let's start here with the Nets at the Hawks first up. And yeah, bet on the Hawks last night. Plus two, they're on this streak. Five game winning streak by the Hawks. I love everything about it. And once again, the Nets just can't win. Can't win on the road. Can't get it together. Kevin Durant goes crazy. And once again, that's what we said the other day when they lost against the Bucks. There was two big things that stuck out, you know, when we were watching that Bucks team. One is Giannis is going absolutely manic. And everybody should be afraid. The league is on notice that there is a there is a alien. That there is a Greek freak let um let run amok the NBA, folks. This is dangerous. This man could do anything at any moment. Dunk, pull up from three, hit a free throw, dunk again, step back three, mid-range jumper, dunk again, dunk on the entire team, defense, block your shot for the win and everything. The man could do it all. The man can do it all, folks. Pass. The man can pass. The man can rebound. The man can shoot threes. Kevin Durant could have hit a three in that game, but uh, but uh, Giannis did to tie the game. It's just it's absurd. That was our one takeaway. Our other takeaway is, yeah, Kevin Durant is always that dude, and you should always be afraid of him. We're not afraid of the Nets. We are afraid of Kevin Durant because this man is just absolutely fantastic. The man went for 55 points last night, commanded the ball, took 28 shots. Kyrie Irving took 32 and only had 31 points. How you take four more shots and have about 24 less points. I mean, this is what we're talking about with Kyrie Irving. We're not afraid of Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving's very, very good. Don't get me wrong. But Kevin Durant is the net. He is the lethal force on this team. The man shot 67%. Kyrie Irving shot 37 on 32 shots. Why is he taking all these shots? Kevin Durant shot 80% from three on 10 threes. 80% from three on 10 threes. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Absolutely stupid. Where Kyrie Irving, 7 of 14 from the three. Still a good percentage. That's still very good. Don't get me wrong. But once again, why is Kyrie Irving taking all those threes? He doesn't want to be the point guard. He wants to be a shooter. Can't shoot as well as Kevin Durant. But this is what we get with Kyrie Irving. So, once again, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, they cannot get it done themselves. No Seth Curry last night. We knew we couldn't bet on this team. And that's exactly what happens. Nets lose by 7. 122 to 115 on the road against the Hawks. When we needed the Nets to win to to secure their own playoff seeding. Now the Nets are the 10th seed and they're so lucky that the Wizards and Knicks and the Pacers and the Pistons and the Magic are all trash. So Nets are at least guaranteed number 10, but they're number 10. They have to win two games just to get into the playoffs and y'all still want me to be scared of them? We are done. We've been done. When are y'all gonna be done? When are y'all gonna wake up and realize, yeah, maybe next year with the Nets when everybody's healthy and they can play the entire year together but that's what we were all saying this season because of last season oh yeah once again they weren't all on the floor at the same time oh but it's gonna be good this year and then they weren't all on the floor together this year and then they broke up and once again oh it's next year oh it's next year when are they gonna get it done now in the now Wake me up when they do because I'm dreaming and I'm having beautiful, sweet dreams. No nightmares over here when I'm sleeping. I think of the Nets, but I'm not scared. I'm like, oh, Nets. <laughs> oh, oh, little, <laughs> little Rainbow Bridge Nets. Oh, this is so great. This is so great. But then I hear a storm crashing. Kersh, the thunder, the clouds be, turn, uh, be turning to gray and the rain is starting to pour. I'm like, oh, what is going on here? And I know it's not the Nets because I see their entire team in front of me I'm like what is going on and then I turn around in my dream and there he is the Greek freak standing over me lightning crashing rain pouring gray skies and that is the true nightmare Giannis in the box not little old Kyrie Irving in the bunnies and the and the blue jays in the sunshines and the rainbows that is the Nets team no 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 no, it's that thunder crush. 
It's the it's bombs being set off. It's lightnings raining down. It's thunder blasting so loud you have to cover your ears. That is the nightmare. That is who you should be afraid of. The Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis evolving. No longer Greek freak, folks. No longer. We have to upgrade that title. Greek freak. It's too, it's too, it doesn't live up to the hype. Greek freak, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, he's probably pretty good. And then you look at him, he's like, that's not a freak. I don't even know what we could call it. Let's go to our fate, what we love to do here. Let's bring up some, uh, what can we do, freak? Let me do freak. He is Greek, so I don't know if we can kind of change that word, but we might be able to change freak to a more sinister, a more terrifying word choice than just freak. Let's do freak, um, um, what's the word? Freak, um, not the dictionary, obviously. Why am I blanking on it, folks? A uh, different word for freak. That's what I'm going to type in because I can't think of the actual word. Different word for freak. Here we go. Let's get this up. Uh, not freaking out. Just freak. Please don't tell me what I'm thinking, Google. Please do not autocorrect me. All right. I know what I want. All right. Similar words for freak. What do we got? What do we got? Unusual. Anomalous. Atypical. Untypical. Unrepresentative. Abnormal. A bear. Apparent. Irregular. Fluky. Exceptional. Unparalleled. Unaccountable. Aberration. Abnormality. Irregularity. Oddity. Monster. I do love the monster. The Greek monster. Uh, monstrosity. Malformation. Mutant. Oh yeah. The Greek mutant. The Greek mutant. The freak is evolving. Turning mutant folks can we call him the greek mutant is that sounding good folks let me see can i get more words up here the greek oddity the greek monstrosity i do like that as well the greek monstrosity the greek mutant the Greek lunatic, <laughs> the Greek whack. <laughs> if we're going to go playful with it, but that's not the point. We don't want to go playful. That's the Nets. The Nets, uh, you know, the Kyrie wackadoo, Kevin Durant wackadoodle. You know, that's them. That's them. That's not the Greek freak. That's not the, the, the Milwaukee Bucks. No, no, no. Anything else kind of catching our fancy over here? The Greek, and we just have to, synonyms, that's the word I'm trying to look for, synonyms of freak. Let me bring in that. Let me do synonym of freak. We get any other choices up here, we may just have to go to Greek mutant, Greek monstrosity. Synonym of freak. What do we got? Ah, uh, yeah, nothing really new here. Kind of the same words. All right. Miss Grecian. Ooh, the Greek Miss Grecian. Yeah. Yeah, the Greek mutation. Mm, love it as well. All right. Maybe we just stick with the Greek freak. Good rhyme. Greek freak. <laughs> All right. All right, but y'all get it that he's evolving. He's the one that we all need to be afraid of. The box, not the nuts, please, folks. Yes? So Kevin Durant, 55 points, 7 rebounds, shooting absolutely fantastic numbers, 67%. Kyrie still put up 31 points, 6 assists, still a minus 6 on the floor. Kevin Durant was not a minus. Uh, Patty Mills, 0 points on... <laughs> Folks, I mean, this is a, why are we afraid of the Nets? They have no role players. It's just Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, and they don't win by themselves. We know this. Patty Mills, 0 of <laughs> Zero of seven from the field. What are we doing? What are we doing, folks? Truly, come on. This is comical at this point. Uh, so nobody else gets it done. No Seth, Seth Curry to help out. Patty Mills can never help out. Uh, Goran Dragic not available. LaMarcus Aldridge not playing. And it all lines up for the Nets to keep losing. Stop it with the Nets. <clears throat> All right, then for the Hawks, last night we had Trey Young, 36 points, 10 assists, fantastic. Uh, DeAndre Hunter, a nice 15 points. Daniel Gallinari coming off the bench, 15 points. Bogdanovich letting us down last night, 0 of 6 from the 3, only 8 points. Still a plus 15 in 22 minutes, but only 22 minutes. Uh, but they did enough to beat the Nets. And once again, the Hawks and the Nets may face in the playing tournament. And once again, I'm going to go the Hawks in that one. I'm not believing in the Nets, folks. I've got no believability in the Nets. New. 
news fast nats hawks get the win they cover the two well they got plus two bingo bango uh they win 122 to 115 nets 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 what are we gonna do with you <laughs> All right, next game up is the Heat at the Bulls, who we bet on the Heat last night. Once again, another minus two spread out here. They win in dominating fashion, 127-109. Once again, stop it with the Bulls. They're not a good team. Heat, this is where they win. This is when they put it all back together and see what they can do. Hopefully, they have no more hiccups for the rest of the regular season. Hopefully, they have no more hiccups in the playoffs. But, you know, with the Heat team, we've seen them hiccup like three different times, three different points of the season. So, they're not that that consistent in that regard so they may break down in the playoffs at some point maybe even early in the playoffs so I don't know how much trust we have in this heat team but again, uh, but going against the Bulls folks yeah we can definitely trust them and we trusted them last night and they win the bet they win outright no problem so, Jimmy Butler, 22 points. We have Max Drew still in the starting lineup. 10 points. 2 of 4 from the 3. Doing the same exact things that Duncan Robinson does. Duncan Robinson off the bench. 2 of 7 from the 3. Classic. 8 points. Tyler Hero, 19 points coming off the bench. Kyle Lowry, 19 points. 10 assists. Fantastic. Bam Adebayo, 16 points. 7 rebounds. Absolutely fantastic. And they all get it together. Then, for this Bulls team, DeMar DeRozan, 26 points. Zach Levine, 33 points. Vucevic, 12 points 10 rebounds fantastic ao still at the one 11 points four assists solid work kobe white let us down uh big time big time oh seven from the three oh nine from the field what are we doing and uh that was really it they got no play out of alex caruso zero points on two shots kobe white struggling off the bench that's why he needs to be in the starting lineup because he struggles off the bench he doesn't struggle in the starting lineup put ao off the bench he can get it done off the bench so bulls are not figuring out any lineup they're still losing games losing against the best teams in the league they still can't get it done and they're still rocking with their classic lineups do y'all see what we mean when we're like can we get some experimentation out here let's try to revitalize some lineups some roles rotations all of that but we get none of that at any point it's a little frustrating so uh bulls lose big time 127 109 well done with the heat and then the last game of the night, folks, the Jazz are just so gosh dang bad, folks. Up 21. They led the entire game, folks. There was one lead change. There was only one lead change to this entire game, and it came in the fourth quarter when the Warriors finally took the lead because the Jazz are trash. 21-point lead, leading, cruising the entire game, and then falling apart, falling apart in the fourth quarter. Absolutely trash. What we've been seeing the entire time. Fools on us for betting them last night. It was seeming like it was going to hit, uh, but they cost me 150 bucks. 150 bucks I would have won if they won. Here they go, losing. Up 21. I was I was already spending the 150. But here they are, trash down the stretch like we always know that they are. Warriors winning without Steph Curry. Stop it with the Jazz. Stop it with the Bulls. Stop it with the Nets. These are frauds. These are frauds in the NBA, folks. Uh, be alerted to the fraudulence, to the scams. Y'all love to kind of point out the scams. Hey, there's this phone call going around. Everybody be wary. You know, they're asking like, hey, I need some money. This is your granddaughter. Hey, grandma. This is your granddaughter. Can you send me some money? Everybody loves to point out those scams. Hey, everybody warned the grandparents. Scam going around. Anybody can fall for it. These teams are scammed, but y'all love it. Y'all fall for these fraudulent teams and then call your grandma to be like, hey, watch out for the fraudulent call going wrong. No, no, no. It needs to be the other way. These grandmas, I'm going to start calling all y'all grandmas out here and be like, hey, you need to tell your son or daughter that the Nets are fraudulent. Be on the lookout for the Nets. Be on the lookout for the Jazz. Be on the lookout for the Bulls. These are fraudulent teams that your son or daughter may fall for. Warn your youngins. Warn your children, grandchildren, whatever you've got. Because there are fraudulent teams roaming around here in the NBA. Taking everybody's fandom. Taking everybody's takes. Taking everybody's money. Do I got to call your grandmas to get, a, to get through to y'all? A little call from old Grammy. Hey. Hey, just wanted to let you know that the Nets are frauds. Don't fall in love with the Nets. And then you'd probably cuss out your grandma and be like, what do you know about basketball, granny? What do you know about basketball in that old folks home? They don't even watch sports there. You don't know what you're talking about. And the grandma's just trying to look out for you. No, 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 Sonny, I heard from takes by fans. The Nets are fraudulent. Do not bet on the Nets. Do not cheer for the Nets. Do not uh, have 
have uh, dug in your heels takes on the nets. I'm just trying to look out for you, grandson. And then you hang up on grandma. You put a hundred dollars on the nets. Uh, you know, minus two against the Hawks last night, and then you're out a hundred bucks. And then you had to call your granny this morning to apologize. Maybe had to even send her some flowers, something like that, a nice gift to brighten her day because you hung up on her because she was just trying to look out for y'all. Come on. Come on. So the Nets are frauds. The Jazz are frauds. The Bulls are frauds. Do not hang up on Granny. Yes? <coughs> so, <coughs> so, <coughs> I don't even know where we were, folks. The fraudulence in the NBA. Stop it with them, please. Can we just stop it with them? So, fraudulence in the NBA. That's all I got to say. There's fraudulence in the NBA. Be warned. We try to warn you. We try to get your grandma to warn you. But here we go. The Jazz just absolutely beefing it last night. Donovan Mitchell went, you know, 26 points, 3 assists. Rudy Gobert, 14 points, 20 rebounds. Still not enough. Turnovers at the worst time. Down 1, down 3. And Rudy Gobert starting to turn over the ball. Bad pass out of bounds. I think I could bring them all up. Let me go to the play-by-play. Uh, let me show y'all here. Uh, let's go over the last uh, three minutes of the game. Let's go over. When, when did they officially lose the lead? This is when they officially lost the lead. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Jordan Poole, step back three to put him up 105-103. This is the last three minutes and 33 seconds of the game when the Jazz finally lost the lead for the first time in the game. Here we go. Bogdanovich, mystery. Womp, womp. Uh, Rudy Gobert, goaltending. Offensive goaltending. Womp womp. Uh, Donovan Mitchell missed 24, 24 foot step back jump shot. Womp womp. Uh, Bogdanovich misses free throw one of two. Womp womp. Bogdanovich makes the second free throw. Oh, I'm glad you can split because that would have tied up the game at 105 and said you're still down a point here because you can't hit a free throw? The hell is that? Then we have Mike Connolly making a layup, putting them back down one, 107, 106. Then we get Bogdanovich missing another three. Rudy Gobert gets the offensive rebound, but then turns it over with the bad pass. Then Donovan Mitchell misses a three-point shot and then they have to play the foul game and then it's just over from that point there is not a lot of time 19 seconds down multiple possessions it's over at that point so the jazz they're just trash they do this all the time no believability here even when they're up big uh so donovan mitchell rudy gobert bogdan bogdanovich all letting us down all being fraudulent stop it with the jazz then for the warriors winning with no steph curry it's always impressive jordan Poole going manic like he always does folks jordan Poole is absolutely wild folks i don't get it like this man is so great consistent in the starting lineup off the bench needing to fill in for the best shooter best three-point shooter of all time steph curry he can do that the man shot six of 15 from the three 31 points six of six rebounds clay thompson 36 points on eight of 17 from three and that's really all to get it done right there draymond green 10 points seven assists nine rebounds andrew wiggins 17 points on 70 percent shooting we will absolutely take that and then gary payton coming off the bench of 10 points yes sir so warriors sticking to it down big doesn't matter at home that warriors home court folks that air gets so electrifying once those three start to fall you better keep calling timeouts like that's exactly once they make two threes kind of a little bit in a row you must take a timeout after every single three-pointer after that to cool down the stadium try to get some momentum back because they live off that momentum they feed big time off that big energy in the worst stadium the court is yellow everybody's cheering it's electrifying in there folks so yeah once those three start raining there is no, there's no hope. They hit 20 of 48 from the three, folks. Man, oh, man. So, Warriors get the win 111 to 107. The Jazz are fraudulent. Stop with the Jazz. All right, that is all the NBA from last night. Now let's see what we've got on tap tonight in the NBA. There's tons of games on, games tipping off in about a half hour. Let's see if we can go over this a little quickly here. Once again, we got to get to these stories and all that, and we got to make sure we have enough time for it all. Uh, so let's see if we can go over these games, betting them a little bit quickly here. Here we go. First game up is the Mavericks at the Bucks, and this is on ABC at 1 o'clock. I'm trying to get out of here at 1 o'clock so we can sit down and watch this game because this is going to be fantastic whenever we get to watch the Greek Freak folks what do we just say that's the one you need to be afraid of 
Uh, but here we go. Mavericks, box, Mavericks plus six and a half. Bucks minus six and a half here. For the Bucks, we get Trey Burke out, Sterling Brown out, Maxi Kleber out, and Tim Hardaway Jr. still out. For the Bucks, everybody's good to go. Giannis is playing tonight. They took the day off the other night. I still think they want to secure that number one seed. This Mavericks team is going to have no answer for this Bucks team down low. The only way this Bucks team wins, if they catch fire from the three, that's what this Mavericks team wins and loses by, the three-point shot. And I don't know if it's going to be here against this Bucks team that is going to go out and prove that they're the number one seed tonight. Prime time, early afternoon game. Luka Doncic, good luck. You're going to need all the luck on your side. I'm going to swallow the six and a half here with the Bucks. Watch this game, bet it, enjoy both the best, best of both worlds right there, and uh, we get to watch the Greek Freak, which is the great thing. Can this man once again try to secure his MVP spot? Go get it done, young fella. Go get it done, Greek. <sighs> what, were, what, what do we call him? Darn it, I missed a name. Greek muted. <laughs> Greek muted. I don't know if I want to call him Greek muted. I feel like that's disrespectful, but, but we'll see. All right, here we go. So we're taking the Bucks minus six and a half. All right, next game up here. Man, oh, man, y'all are testing me. Y'all are testing me out here. Wizards at the Celtics. Wizards plus 13. Celtics minus 13. Come on. Really, y'all are doing this to me? Y'all are about to do this to me again? Y'all want me to take these points again and be, you know, uh, disrespectful to my faith, to my belief in the Celtics team? Y'all are about to do this to me again? Man, oh, man, for the Wizards, everybody's going to go. Kyle Kuzma's out, though. For the Celtics, everybody's going to go besides Robert Williams. Y'all know. Porzingis, though. Porzingis should have an absolute field day out here. And I love this Celtics team. Y'all know we do. And it absolutely crushes my soul that I'm about to say this. But I'm about to take the Wizards with the points. I think this is just too much. I don't think this Celtics team can blow out any team for the rest of the time here. They need that big. Porzingis has been going crazy these last few games. So, I hope the Celtics win. I believe they win, but I don't know if they can ever dominate and win by big-time numbers again. I'll keep cashing in until they prove otherwise. I hate this, folks, but I got to take the Wizards plus 13. I will not reiterate these words again. So, Wizards plus 13, that's the final time, and we're done with this. Um, I'm done with this. I'm done with it. I'm already hating myself for having to utter those words, but that's what it is. Unfortunate. All right, let's move on to the 340 game here. We got Nuggets at the Lakers. Nuggets minus 2.5. Lakers plus 2.5. For the Nuggets, everybody's good to go. For the Lakers, LeBron, game time decision. Anthony Davis, game time decision. Are they going to phone it in? Are they just going to give up for the season? They are one full game back from that 10 seed of the Spurs. And they've got the Nuggets in the way tonight. Lakers at home, afternoon game. Come on, LeBron, you got to get it done. I'm going to stay away from this one. I'm not going to kind of get in the way of the King here. I know we did it against the Pelicans. We should probably do it again here today. Nuggets minus two and a half, but there's something about this Lakers team. All, you know, LeBron's backs against the wall. It's going to happen at some point and it may happen today during their day game. I'll stay away from it and enjoy the outcome. Is this on TV? We got all day. Oh my God. Look at that. ABC, LeBron, primetime television following Giannis. I mean, come on. It I'm just going to stay away from this one. Once again, tons of games on today. Let's stay away from this Lakers game. Could be wonky today. Wonky alert. Could be wonky. We'll stay away from it. All right, next game up, we got the Pistons at the Pacers. Pistons plus two and a half. Pacers minus two and a half. Both of these teams are competitive. Pacers don't win. Pistons kind of win a little bit. So, uh, uh, I don't know if I said that right. Pacers don't win. Pistons do win a little bit. Did I call that right the first time? I don't know. But either way, for the Pistons, Corey Joseph, a game-time decision. Cade Cunningham, a game-time decision as well. For the Pacers, everybody is kind of good to go. So this game could get a little wonky as well. I like the Pistons plus two and a half. Cade Cunningham being a game-time decision kind of uh, – chasing me away from this so we'll stay away from this one maybe we bet it a little bit closer to game time but two teams with nothing left to play for I think we're going to start phasing that out a little bit as we take the Wizards plus 13 phase out the teams that have nothing to play for again but uh, once again that's just too many points right there we'll stay away from the close spread of the Pistons and the Pacers 
All right, then we get the Knicks and the Magic. Knicks on the back-to-back. -back. No, thank you. Then we get the Timberwolves at the Rockets. Timberwolves minus 13. Rockets plus 13. Timberwolves should take care of business here. Absolutely. And I think this is going to be a big spread that we take. Yeah, I'm going to take this big old spread. This was a great win for the Timberwolves in their last matchup, beating the Nuggets by 6. Only have to swallow 13 here. Uh, did this just go down half a point? I think it did. So, yeah, let me get the Timberwolves minus 13. Facing our fears. Once again, big spread against the Rockets. They should be able to take care of business. I'm swallowing, swallowing a big spread here tonight folks Timberwolves minus 13 all right, then we get the Heat at the Raptors. Heat on the back-to-back, -back, so we stay away from it. Then we get the Blazers at the Spurs. Blazers plus 14. Spurs minus 14. And didn't they just face? Is, is this a back-to-back -back series? This is a back-to-back -back series. So the Spurs just blew out the Blazers 130 to 111. We don't bet back-to-back -back series. Is, so we will stay away from this one. Then we get the Suns and the Thunder. Suns at the Thunder. Suns minus 14 and a half. Thunder plus 14 and a half. And this Thunder team is decently competitive, even without all their pieces. Once again, everybody's out for the season. But the Suns, I mean, just losing against the Grizzlies, uh, competitive against the Warriors with no Steph Curry. I'm not going to swallow 14 with them. Then we get the Warriors at the Kings. Warriors on the back-to-back. -back. We stay away from them. Then we get the Pelicans and the Clippers. Last game of the night here. Pelicans plus 2.5. Clippers minus 2.5. Let's see who's all good to go for the for these teams, everybody's good to go for the Pelicans, for the Clippers. We get everybody good to go. So Paul George is coming back or is going to be playing tonight. So this should be a really great game overall. Clippers, Pelicans, big time movement on the line here. We get, well, I guess not big time movement. Pelicans, four and a half games back from the Clippers. They really have to win out. Clippers have to lose out if they want to kind of flip-flop spots here. So uh, we'll stay away from this one. Close game. Should be a good one. And we'll use this one as definitely a determining factor in our power rankings. All this, once again, get re getting re-updated tomorrow on the show. Pelicans and the Clippers. Pelicans currently not on the list. Clippers not on the list, but anything can happen when we reorder them tomorrow. So, all right, we're going to have three games that we're betting on today. We are going to take the Bucks minus 6.5, the Wizards plus the 13, and the Timberwolves minus 13 tonight, folks. Games tipping off in about half an hour. All right, so now that we have all the NBA out of the way, let's start clearing the backlog, folks. Yeah, stories coming fast and furious in the NFL during the last week, week and a half. Well, really, ever since the offseason started, we are getting jaw-dropping news almost on the daily, and we are backed up on the stories that we have to discuss, get the takes on the record on. So for the remainder of the show, we are just clearing out this backlog. Let's try to do it quickly so we can all watch this Bucks game, but if we have to stay a little extra, we will do whatever it takes to get rid of all these stories. We must clear out these stories. We must start moving on in the show a little bit. So, here we go. What do we got in the NFL? Let's see. What do we have to talk about? Here we go. Well, let's start with the newest stories up first. And, man, oh, man, the Dolphins traded away wide receiver Devontae Parker. I don't love it. I do like Devontae Parker. Unfortunately, he was he is always injured. Let's bring it up. I mean, how many? I don't know. I, I'm going to kind of say this. I don't know if Devontae Parker has been healthy an entire season. I don't think Devontae Parker has played a 16-game season in his entire career, folks. Let me bring up these stats. Just to double check and truly see what we're talking about here. So here we go. Ever since 2015, he played 14 games. 2016, he played 15. 2017, he played 13. 2018, he played 11. 2019, there it is. He started. He played all 16 games that year for 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns. That's what this man can do for your team when fully healthy, and that's why I love him. Great tall wide receiver. What do we got? 6'2", 6'3"? 6-3, fantastic. Great height, goes up and gets the ball. Great big wide receiver, but he's always a little banged up throughout the year. But 1,200-yard season, full 16 games. That's what he can bring to your team, and he's going to the New England Patriots. Let's quickly finish up. 2020, he played 14 games. Last season, he only played 10. So if this man was a little bit more stable, a little bit more healthy, a little bit more consistent, I don't think the Dolphins trade him away. Still a little upset they did that they did trade him away just because, you know, he is kind of our beef. He is a little bit of our height. I love what he's got. Would have loved to see what Mike McDaniels could do with them, but they decide to kind of build for the future a little bit. So the Dolphins trade wide receiver Devontae Parker to the Patriots for a 2022 this year's fifth round pick. 
Or no, hang on, let me back that up. The Dolphins trade wide receiver Devontae Parker and a fifth-round pick in this year's draft for a third-round pick next year. So building for the future, really kind of trading away all of our draft picks this year. I don't really mind too much on that, but I really don't love getting rid of Devontae Parker. We'll see if uh, Mac Jones can utilize him well. So Devontae Parker from the Dolphins to the Patriots, same division. Don't love it. We'll see how he goes. All right, that story out of here. One story down, 50 more to go. Let's keep going here, and here we go. We talked about it a little bit yesterday on the show. Washington scandal. Here it is, folks. Here we go. Breaking news. The House Oversight Committee has received info alleging the Washington commanders used a scheme to hold back ticket revenue from the NFL. The commanders allegedly did not pass along the required 40% share of ticket ticket sales to visiting teams, holding back money. That's the only thing that really gets you. You can, you know, treat, you know, women in the workplace bad. You could treat your female cheerleaders very, very bad, but you cannot mess with the NFL's money, the government's money, and that's what's going to end up catching Rob, um, Rob Snyder? Oh, I feel Dan Snyder. That's what I was about to say. Rob Snyder didn't seem right. All right, Dan Snyder. That's what's truly going to catch Dan Snyder and maybe bring down this entire Washington organization or just the Snyder name in general. So not looking good here for Washington. Not looking good here for Dan Snyder. And uh, we'll see how he gets out of this one. How does he worm his way out of this one? I think the worming ends here, folks. When you mess with the money, you mess with the bull, you get the horns. You mess with the money, you get the prison. You mess with the money, you get got. <laughs> you mess with the bull, you get the horns. And you better not be playing with nobody's money. Dan Snyder out here holding back 40% of the required ticket sales to give to visiting teams. Not going to go over too well for them. So this is just unfolding. This is starting to break, and we'll see how it all plays out. But it's not looking good for Washington. Are they finally going to get you know what they truly deserve? Is, is it all going to come out to light? I'm telling you, if we know everything about Washington, it is going to get ugly, folks. And we'll see. We'll keep tracks of it and see how it all plays out. But it's not looking good here. All righty. Here we go. Another story down. Next one up, and this is not gonna good go. This is not gonna go well for Lamar Jackson. I love Lamar Jackson. I respect Lamar Jackson, but I don't know, man. Lamar Jackson has told the Ravens that he's quote currently too focused on having a strong 2022 season. Doesn't want to negotiate a deal until next off season. So. <clears throat> That's kind of been the talk of the town in the NFL ever since maybe the last two seasons, ever since Patrick Mahomes got paid. When was Lamar Jackson going to get paid? And we saw, um, you know, a little bit earlier in the week that the Ravens went and extended the head coach, John Harbaugh, all of that. The same thing that we saw the Cardinals do when Kyler Murray was trying to kind of demand a bigger contract. So it's looking like they're playing the same game. And I love Lamar Jackson. He is a winner. That's exactly what we love about him when the Ravens... When Lamar Jackson missed the final seven games of the regular season here, they lost every single one of the games. I mean, he's a sure, bona fide winner in this league. We just need to see the passing short up a tad. And once again, you can put a little bit of the blame on the wide receivers, absolutely. But we do need to see that uh, short up just a tad. And until I think he does that we know he's a great runner best dual threat quarterback in the league but we need the passing still to kind of be subpar not a little bit of an afterthought and you know he's got great completion percentage career 64 percent 66 percent 64 percent 64 percent ever since he's uh played his first three seasons 13 and 2 record 11 and 4 record was 7 and 5 until he got injured but uh you know, he need to be available. And that's a little bit of Lamar Jackson, maybe not quite being 100% available. Uh, so, he's playing a little bit of a dangerous game here. All power to him. Once again, you know, I absolutely do what you feel is best for your position. Absolutely. If you don't want to kind of, you know, you know, you will kind of want to play hardball in negotiations, absolutely do that. Absolutely. This is your power. This is your leverage. Use everything to that. It just doesn't always win. Kyler Murray had to walk back everything he said and everything he's done already this offseason. I don't want Lamar Jackson doing the same thing, but this is what we're getting. Both teams kind of digging in. They don't want to pay him until he kind of proves he can win a little bit more, 
be a little bit more healthy out there, and it's going to be tough, but... Lamar Jackson, he's electric, he's a winner, he's clutch as heck, I mean, we saw what Tyler Huntley did this season, it wasn't bad, but he couldn't get it done in the clutch, Lamar Jackson can get it done in the clutch, and really that alone should be uh, like the wake up call for the Ravens to be like, hey, pay the man, because the man wins, the man's a winner in this league, and one thing that we do not knock over here is winning, if you win, yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you can really be bad, but as long as you win, that's what we're talking about, we're Kirk Kirk with Kirk Cousins, the man is great. The stats are great, but he doesn't win. So we really don't kind of praise Kirk Cousins that much. We need to see the winning. Winning. Lamar Jackson's a winner. Maybe you do pay him. Raven's not dead set on paying him all a lot of big money. Lamar Jackson wants the big money. So, two sides digging in. They pay the coach. They don't pay the player. Same thing the Cardinals did. <sighs> interesting, interesting. So, this is definitely going to be the big story this offseason. Lamar Jackson getting his money. Everything, everybody des thinks he deserves it besides the Ravens. Interesting. Lamar Jackson said, no, 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 I'm done with, I'm done talking about contract. No, 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 I'm just going to have a strong 2022 season. If that's what y'all want, that's what y'all going to get. And then when I do do that, get ready to pay up or I'm walking. You could have had, you know, a little bit of a more friendly deal here. But now once I prove myself, I'm going extra and above. I want another 50 million on top of whatever I wanted before. And I'm going to demand it. Or I'm walking. And you've seen the AFC? You've seen all those great quarterbacks? You want me to walk? I'll walk. Give me the money. Stop playing with me. We'll see how it ends for Deshaun or Lamar Jackson. All right. Next one up here, we had Colin Kaepernick, folks. And we just saw him throw yesterday. And this was some of the old stories that we were going to talk about. Once again, got lost in the shuffle. But here we go. Colin Kaepernick is open to accepting a backup quarterback role, which is truly interesting here. Now, I am going to reiterate this. I do not think Colin Kaepernick will ever play in the league again. I think it kind of goes against what he got in his settlement, the NDA that he had assigned. Uh, once again, going back uh, to 2016, I believe. When the kind of, uh, you know, secret negotiations, the secret meetings between Colin Kaepernick and the NFL because Colin Kaepernick was alleging that the NFL was kind of blacklisting him, which seemed to be true because the NFL said, all right, here's some money that we don't know, sign this NDA, and then that's it. So the NFL does not want Colin Kaepernick back in the league. We all, wa well, I didn't watch it because I saw one thing and I really didn't like it. I really, really did not like how he phrased it. I didn't um but we you know he does have a documentary on netflix and he kind of compares the nfl to like slave trading and slave mentality where the owners own the players i don't think we should be drawing those parallels i don't think they really kind of line up at all but he said that that definitely knocks the nfl the nfl seen that they they the nfl does not want Kyler kaepernick back in the league still and i think that uh, some of the owners are in on it as well. And why I think that is because the NFL sent out a notice. Uh, so let's kind of rewind this back a little bit. Colin Kaepernick was going to throw at Michigan Spring football game yesterday at halftime, which he did. And the NFL sent out this kind of note per the wire, and this is what it said. Free agent co quarterback Colin Kaepernick will hold an exhibition throwing event with some draft-eligible players during halftime of Michigan's spring game tomorrow. NFL clubs personnel in attendance are permitted to watch this event. Please call Ken Fior with any questions. So the NFL is telling these NFL club personnel, hey, it's permitted to watch that. Now, why would they Why would they say that? This is just a person. This is a quarterback. Why would they not be permitted? I think the NFL in the NDA that they had Colin Kaepernick sign when he kind of took the settlement that we don't know what the dollar amount is. There's speculation. A lot of people are saying, oh, we didn't get that much money. I'm sure he got that much money. If Colin Kaepernick was truly able to prove that the NBA, NFL was truly blacklisting him, I mean, man, oh, man. And that brings down a little bit of the NFL, probably a lot, actually. And the fact that the NFL brought him in and was like, all right, let's get this done with. And then, you know, 
bottom out, basically, I think he's good, folks. I think it was a lot of money. I think it was a lot more than a lot of people are reporting. A lot of people are reporting, oh, it's just $10 million. I don't believe that. I believe it's a lot more, and I also believe there was a stipulation you will never be in the NFL again, and I think this is just a little bit of a show here. We say we see this every single year. Every year we get this, oh, Colin Kaepernick's still available. Who's going to take Colin Kaepernick? Oh, Colin Kaepernick's working out. He posts a video on Instagram. He posts a video on Twitter. Oh, he's working out at Michigan's springtime game at halftime with some draft prospects. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I think it's just a big old dance. I think it's a big old show. Drum up all the emotions. Drum up all the attention again. And then we never get them. And then we're talking about this next year again. I really think, folks, that Colin Kaepernick cannot, cannot play in the NFL again. The fact that the NFL would kind of say, hey, you guys are permitted to go and watch. Once again, they have to be told that they can watch this. Why wouldn't they be able to watch? He's he's a free agent. He's a player. Why wouldn't we be able to watch him? Why do we need permission from the league? They're permitted? Interesting. It just once again, the language, it just caught my attention. That's all I'm saying, folks. It just caught my attention. I think it's a little bit weird. So he did end up throwing yesterday at Michigan's halftime spring football game. And once again, just kind of reiterated, hey, um, you know, I can make this team, I can make any team better, and I am willing to kind of take the backup role and prove that I can play. Once again, we don't really, you know, uh, you know, see that by a lot of quarterbacks. Cam Newton won't go back up. Cam Newton wants to be the starter. Here we go. Now maybe Colin Kaepernick loosening kind of the restrictions. Hey, I'll even be a backup. And then it gets everybody kind of asking, oh my goodness, nobody's even going to bring him in for the backup. He's the best backup in the league. Once again, drumming up those emotions. I think it may be just a little bit of a big game out here, folks. I think it may be, but we'll see what happens. I don't think he ever gets signed. We said, we've been saying this for the last four or five years. Every single offseason, Colin Kaepernick's name comes in the media, and we still get the same end result. No team sign him. And this year, there's really not that many great quarterback prospects in the trap. There's really only kind of two big names. Kenny Pickett, I believe the other guy's name is. Malik Willis, the other guy. So, you know, this would be the year to do Colin Kaepernick, to take Colin Kaepernick. So if any nobody really truly picks him up this year, I think that kind of narrative of, hey, he can never play in the NFL again because of that NDA he signed. I think that would look a little bit more plausible. So all I'm saying is just take everything with this whole Colin Kaepernick thing with the big old grain of salt. Yes, the overall message, what he stands for, absolutely. Absolutely. There should be no racial discrimination in anything. Absolutely. I, you know, what, he, what his overall message, I don't know if I believe in every single detail that comes out of his mouth, but the overall message, hey, you know what, I'm going to kind of, you know, kneel against the national anthem, which I have absolutely no problem with at all. I mean, that's how you peacefully protest. I mean, folks, do you not know that America is like freedom of speech, home of the brave? I mean, you are allowed to voice your opinions. Whether mainstream, whether not, whether actually happening, any merit behind him or any no merit behind him, you have your right to protest and all that. And kneeling for the anthem, it's the most peaceful way that you can bring some attention to a big glaring issue that the NFL is still saying is going on in the league. What was the big thing this year? Oh, Brian Flores. And once again, the NFL came out and was like, all right, we're all going to have a minority coach. Everybody needs a minority coach on offense side of the ball it's just like they know the race issue is still in the NFL but they're making a making a fool out of Colin Kaepernick it just makes no sense folks do you see we're still talking about the same things every single year nothing ever changes even though that there are problems it's everyone saying oh there's no problems and then secretly saying all right well let's hire a minority on all the offensive side of the ball let me bring up that story now let me see can I bring this up quick uh, where is this lost in the shuffle uh, let's bring it up here. Let me see, because it goes hand in hand, so we might as well knock these stories out together. Where do we get the NFL's new policy? Where do we got? It's coming up, folks. Hang on. Uh, this is what I'm saying. There's so many stories, folks. So many stories. Can't catch up. Here we go. Hang on. What do we got? Give me a second. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Some changes to the NFL's Rooney rule. Women will now be included in all Rooney rule requirements and all teams must hire a quote diverse person, which they categorize as a female or a member of an ethnic or racial minority to work closely with the head coach and offensive staff as an offensive assistant. Once again, why we want offensive player, offensive minded coaches at the head coaching spot. Even the NFL is kind of seeing everybody's 
going offense. Offense is the wave of the future. It's no disrespect to any defensive guys. It's just, hey, head coach, we need the offense because the offense is the, be is the biggest thing in football. Who scores the most points wins the game. Defense, Brian Flores, great defense coordinator, one of the most brilliant defensive minds in the game. He's just not a head coach, and it's not a knock on him. It's just what it is. Usually defensive guys have no attention to the offense because they think they can get it done just defensively, and we see that does not work. It works in the Super Bowl, but you have to get to the Super Bowl first before that works. It's just unfortunate. So even the NFL is like, hey, yeah, yeah, let's do the Rooney rule, but let's make sure it's offensive so we don't have this whole Brian Flores situation again because it's probably going to come about, you know, again, because uh, nothing ever changes. So this is what we're saying. The NFL is like, oh, Colin Kaepernick, what are you doing kneeling? Absolutely disrespectful. Uh, there's no race problem in the NFL. Uh, yeah, let's have some higher, let's have some diverse people in the offensive assistant role. Let's do that. <laughs> it's just like, yes, of course there is. Uh, it's just so, it's tiresome for me. And so I know it's tiresome for y'all. Damn. So we'll see what happens. I just don't know if we should all be kind of, uh putting all like uh, we should put all of our energy in something else right because this obviously does not work <laughs> so we'll see what happens but i don't think Kyle kaepernick plays in the nfl again we'll see what happens though. all right and this is what he did we got a little bit of video of him let's see what he got we got three th three throws in this uh clip right here first one's gonna be short second one's gonna be pretty long and the third one's gonna be a little bit of a comeback route so here we go just a short route right here um, hang on. Did I miss one? This one, yeah, right here. I was about to say. First one, short, about a 15-yard out route. Colin Kaepernick right on the money. I mean, that's accurate as heck, absolutely. Uh, here we go. Second one coming up. He's going to go deep on this one. Deep dish pizza. Let's count the yards. He's going to launch it from, let's just say, the 35-yard line, getting it all the way down to the... 15 it was did not get caught but it's a little bit of the receiver there being a little slow that was pretty still good by Colin Kaepernick so 35 to the 15 we get 15 plus 35 50 <laughs> 50 yards right there pretty clean nice little rainbow floater ball got there all that and then here we go the last throw a little bit of a comeback route on the right sideline and pretty good on time pretty good all that on the sideline 15 yards solid there so overall yeah we've seen this man throw he's mobile he's able to throw on the run all that that's exactly what we know of Colin Kaepernick anyway shouldn't have been kicked out of the league in the first place I still liked him with the 49ers and uh, Jim Harbaugh and all that but here we are so Colin Kaepernick the yearly Colin Kaepernick question does he get signed I don't think so, folks. I think he's not allowed to play. I think he knows. Well, he does know it. If he if he is truly barred from playing, he knows it in that NDA. The NFL knows it, and probably the owners know it as well. Head coaches probably don't, but the head coaches have to get approval from the owner, and the owners will be like, no, I don't want that. I don't want that for the team because they know they can't hire him. So we'll see what happens, folks. I just, I'm a little sick of the game, but we'll see what happens. All right, let's keep moving on here. What do we got? All right, here we go. We got former Colts running back Marlon Mack will sign with the Texans. Great running back. Love Marlon Mack, but uh, it's just unfortunate the Colts running backs dwindle. We had the the big three, Jonathan Taylor, Marlon Mack, Nehem Hines, and Marlon Mack decides to opt out. So Marlon Mack going to the Texans. Great pick up there. Great running back. They will help Davis Mills, hopefully. All right, then we get this. Dolphins quarterback Xavier Howard agreed to a new contract again. Again, every year this man wants an extension, and here we go, another extension. He's definitely worth it because this man is a shutdown interception machine. So, Dolphins quarterback Xavier Howard agrees to new terms again after just agreeing to new terms last year, and I believe the year before that. It's like every year the man's like, I want a new contract. So, he got a new five-year, $50 million deal, so he's staying with the Dolphins, which I absolutely love. Great corner. We'll see if he can continue this season with no Brian Flores. Can he still be good? We'll see. All right, we get this. <clears throat> Jets wide receiver Braxton Berrios on quarterback Zach Wilson. Quote, he's willing to do whatever it takes to improve in 2022. Now, we won't go too deep in this article. We won't go in the article at all because we don't have time. Uh, but here, yeah, uh, Zach Wilson definitely needs to improve. Braxton Berrios is back, which we love. We saw this man truly come into his own the final three, four games for the Jets, the regular season, getting it done, scoring touchdowns, big plays, able to move the ball, all of that. So Braxton Berrios, Zach Wilson connection there. Zach Wilson needs 
needs to improve, obviously, in year two. All the rookie quarterbacks need to improve in year two. So we'll see how it all plays out. But Braxton Barrios confident in Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson confident in himself. And we'll see if the Jets can take a little bit of another step here from last season to, to this season. So we'll see Zach Wilson, Braxton Barrios again next year. Hopefully they can do a little bit better. All right, then we get this. Patrick Mahomes on the new overtime rule says, quote, your job is to find a way to win the game, no matter how long it takes. Exactly that. You don't see, you know, Patrick Mahomes complaining about the overtime rule because he gets it done in overtime. Oh, one possession, yeah, I'll score the touchdown then. No problem. You don't see Patrick Mahomes losing in overtime. He gets it done. We don't need to cry about it and have the rules change because Patrick Mahomes didn't win. Josh Allen didn't win. It's unfortunate. 13 seconds. Take care of it. This is a winner right here, a champion. You don't see him wanting to change the rule every single time he doesn't get his way. Be like Patrick Mahomes, yes? Let's keep moving on. And this we may have to go to the article for because whoever this man's truly talking about, oh boy, you better make sure you show up because Jim Irsay, he says the Colts are looking to add exciting defensive free agents who could, quote, make a big difference. So whichever defensive free agent comes to the Colts, you better make sure you do your job or this man is going to unleash on you after next season like he did on Carson Wentz. He was a mistake. It's unacceptable. No disrespect to the Jaguars, but they're the worst team in the league. All of that. Don't be like Carson Wentz. A big time reminder, do not be like Carson Wentz. If you are getting signed for the Colts this season, it's Super Bowl or bust, and you better be playing that way, or Jim Ursay is going to absolutely obliterate you next year in the offseason when he opens his mouth. So, Colts players, Colts defensive players, be on alert. You better get it done. You better get it done. That's all I can say. All right, here we go. Bears head coach Matt Alberfluss expects, quote, a big jump from Justin Fields in year two. Yeah, well, that's going to be a little bit easier said than done because he was already ruined by Matt Nagy. We don't like Matt Alberfluss. We have, uh, you know, this is what we kind of said about him when we were talking about all the new hires here. Bears get a new head coach, Matt Alberfluss. We do not like it. He's a defensive guy talking about build a, building a foundation, and we're saying that Justin Fields is ruined. Once again, Matt Nagy, hey, we've got this plan for Justin Fields. Hey, we got the plan. We're starting Andy Dalton until the plan develops. Matt Alberfluss, hey, I'm here to build the foundation. Let's build the foundation. Let's get everything good and then build upon that. So Justin Fields is truly just donezo in this league, folks. He's got no help behind him. These head coaches don't know what they're doing with offensive talent. And Justin Fields is probably most likely going to fade into oblivion this season because of all the great quarterbacks in the AFC alone. So, unfortunate for Justin Fields. He's really going to have to kind of do it himself, which is truly unfortunate. If he can get it done himself, because he's going to get no help from the head coaching standpoint. Defensive guy, he's not going to help him out. So, he wants to build a foundation. All right, the plan, the foundation. Yeah, it all works out, folks. We see it all work every single year, yeah? All right, next up here. Panthers coach Matt Rule says they should not be locked. Not that... that. Let's start this over. Panthers head coach Matt Rule says they are not locked into drafting a quarterback at number six. He says priority number one right now is evaluating draft for franchise quarterback while also keeping an eye on the trade market. Once again, a little bit too late on that whole quarterback trade market. They don't have a quarterback. They have Sam Darnold. He's not a quarterback. One of the worst. He is the worst starting quarterback in the league. And the two worst quarterbacks in the league currently are Mason Rudolph and. Uh, Sam Darnold. And I said this yesterday under a tweet. And, like, what are y'all saying? This is what I say about y'all. Y'all look for, like, Twitter dunks. Y'all look to dunk. Y'all don't understand what people are saying. Y'all just want to take a dunk opportunity. So this is what uh, we get reported yesterday. The Charlotte Observer reports that there's a strong chance Sam Darnold will be the Panthers week one starter. So I tweeted under that tweet, said, the two worst quarterbacks in the league right now are Mason Rudolph and Sam Darnold. That's all I said. The two worst quarterbacks in the league right now are Mason Rudolph and Sam Darnold. And somebody underneath me said, Rudolph isn't starting, though. Yes, I'm aware. I'm aware Mason Rudolph's not a starting quarterback. I didn't say the two worst starting quarterbacks in the league right now are Mason Rudolph and Sam Darnold. No, I said the two worst quarterbacks in the league right now is Mason Rudolph and Sam Darnold. Is Mason Rudolph not in the league? 
He is. And why I said this, why I said these words and how I said them was to make that comparison that Sam Darnold is as bad as a backup quarterback. That's why I said that. And somebody even liked that tweet. Somebody liked the reply. Rudolph isn't starting though. I get it. Once again, y'all are looking for the dunk. Do you not just see what I wrote? Read what I wrote. I know what I wrote. I know the information on what I wrote. Y'all just look for the dunks. Okay, that's why I take everything y'all say with a big old grain of salt because y'all don't read. Y'all don't have reading comprehension. Y'all just take one word and focus on one word and then go on that for the dunk. And it worked. He got a like out of it. Congratulations, Zach Pitt 1999. You got your like, you got your attention, congratulations, you got your quote-unquote dunk, according to you. So, yes, I know what I say. I get it. Just because you interpreted it a different way because you were looking for the negative aspect so you can get the Twitter dunk, that's you. That's y'all. That's why we had to kind of start our own show here because we see how y'all talk about sports. We don't love it. We don't love it 100% most of the time. So that's, that's all I'm saying. Stop with the Twitter dunks. Will y'all stop trying to dunk on everybody? People know what they're trying to say. That's why we do the live show. That's why I have the camera here. So you see all of my expressions. You see all of my body gestures. So you get the full picture of what I'm trying to say. I use my voice. I use the words. I use the emphasis. I use the camera. I use my body language. Folks, if you watch a show, my arms are going every single minute. My arms do not stop waving and flailing along here. It helps get out and express my point. Yes, yes, it's not just one word. Y'all focus in on one word as I'm doing a million things to get my overall point across. Listen, watch, and take my entire full body of work, language, body, motions, words, emphasis, emphasis. Do you see us change up our tone and our emphasis throughout the show? Yes, folks. Once again, that all plays in to my overall point, my overall takes. So stop trying to box me in and dunk on me. Will y'all stop with the dunks? That's all I'm asking. Jeez. That's why we don't like writing on Twitter because y'all just don't understand what we're trying to say. Why we have the camera on the show, yes? So y'all can see. I even smirk sometimes when I'm being a little bit smurfier. For the most part, I'm just Smurfy all the time. I'm a little out here being Smurfy. Some more Smurfy than others. But overall, it's Smurfy. We are a Smurfy show out here. We Smurf around. Smurf this, Smurf that, Smurf, Smurf, Smurf. We're a little Smurfy out here, folks. Sue me for being Smurfy, yes? All right, back to this. So... Sam Darnold's trash. We know this. He cannot be the number one starting quarterback. That is bad news. Once again, Matt Rule letting all these quarterbacks fly off the wall. Matt Ryan, Marcus Mariota, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Jimmy Garoppolo. Why are you not inquiring about him? Uh, Gardner Minshew. Why are you not inquiring about him? Gardner Minshew's hands down a million percent better than Sam Darnold. So, Matt Rule doing classic Matt Rule things, no urgency, playing, you know, pointing the finger, playing the blame game, which he always does. Um, and then we get this, Cam Newton still going on the topic with the Panthers. Cam Newton says, quote, I am waiting on the best fit as it pertains to winning a championship and getting a fair chance to play. Once again, he wants to play. He's not going to take a backup role. Maybe he stays in a place where they utilize him in the red zone, but I don't even know if he'd go for that. So with the whole, oh, he's going to stay with the Panthers and Matt Rule wants him to be a Panther and all that, it may not be that good. Open and shut. Cam Newton. We get this as well. Free agent Cam Newton is drawing interest. Can we stop on that as well? Cam Newton can no longer play in the NFL. His arm is not good enough to play. His legs are good. But once again, he doesn't want to be the backup. He doesn't want to be the gadget guy. He doesn't want to only be used in the red zone. And that doesn't even work. We've seen some teams try to, all right, let's use them in the red zone and then use our quarterback, our actual quarterback, um, you know, for the rest of the game. The Saints tried that with Taysom Hill using only Taysom Hill in the red zone. With Jameis Winston. And that never pans out. It never pans out. We know this. You can't have two quarterbacks playing at the same time. That never works out. 
So even if Cam Newton does do that, it's not going to work out. Even if you put Cam Newton, all right, you're going to take all the red zone snaps. Every time we get into the 20, you're going to be the quarterback out there on the field. That never works out. So Cam Newton's waiting around. The Panthers may bring him back. I hope they don't. And that's no disrespect. Once again, I'm not knocking Cam Newton. He's had a great career. It's just his time's done. Having more than four years success in the league, that's the outlier. More than four years is the outlier. Yes, we get caught up with all these quarterbacks going 15, 20 years. That's the quarterback position. Sometimes you don't get hit that much. And it's a little bit easier for you to have more than four-year stretches because you are kind of the face of the franchise guy. And if you're good, you can, you know, hang around. Just Cam Newton, he's not the guy. He's not that guy. It's unfortunate. It's what it is. But he's still kind of holding out. So we'll see if he gets picked up anywhere. And then is this the final thing we got on the Panthers here? Yeah, here we go. Uh, the Panthers general manager on drafting a quarterback says, we do need a quarterback, and at some point you have to take a shot, especially in the top 10. So we've been kind of getting mixed signals here by the Panthers. Oh, you know, we've got Sam Darnold. We're good on him. You know, we want to maybe bring in a free agent. Uh, we're not 100% sold on the draft, and then we get this. We do need a quarterback, and at some point you have to take a shot, especially in the top 10. So definitely watch the Panthers. Maybe getting Kenny Pickett. Maybe getting Malik Willis. Once again, this is kind of why we're clearing out our backlog today so we can watch some draft prospects which quarterback is better which should the Panthers take I'm sure they make the wrong choice because that's what the Panthers do but we need to have our decision so we know what is the right and wrong take and hold them accountable to that wrong take so Panthers I would definitely say they're getting a quarterback in this year's draft we'll see who they take what else do we get all right let's keep moving on here about halfway through let's keep chugging along Oof, another deep breath. Here we go. Saints, co Saints coach Dennis Allen says Taysom Hill will focus on playing tight end, and that's pretty good. I like Taysom Hill as the quarterback, that, but it never really kind of panned out to fruition. Last year was wonky overall because you went with Jameis, then he gets injured, and then you got to go with him, and he gets injured, and then you got to go with third string, Trevor Simeon, he gets banged up and all that. So you never really kind of had Taysom Hill out there as kind of the lone passer, but now... Dennis Allen coming in, doing things his way, keeping Taysom Hill at that tight end gadget position, utilizing kind of Jameis Winston as a starting quarterback and having these two players out on the field at the same time. I think that's the better decision. And Dennis Allen coming in right away and kind of making his voice known. No, no, no. Sean Payton, you know, played around with it, never got it done. I'm not playing around with it. You're the tight end gadget guy. We'll do some great things for you in the red zone. Yes, but yes, Jameis Winston's our starting quarterback. So Taysom Hill. Staying at the tight end position. Love it. All right, we went over this. The change to the Rooney rule. Went over that. Then we get this. Andy Reid says that there's no rift with Tyreek Hill after the Dolphins trade. And, you know, we kind of talked about this a little bit. Hey, is this the beginnings of the downfall of the Chiefs dynasty once again? And once again, like a four-year stretch. This dynasty may not last longer than four years. No, taste, no Tyreek Hill. Can the whole offense be so explosive? And can Patrick Mahomes still be good with no Tyreek Hill? So I just want to read maybe, what do we got? Uh, a couple of quotes here. Let's just read the first one. Uh, once again, we got too much to talk about. No more having time to spend. It's unfortunate, but we got to get through all these stories. Uh, so I just want to read the first paragraph here. First quote. Let's see what they're saying. Is there a rift, feud, team, organization, player. Let's see what Andy Reid said. So here we go. Lead up to the quote. Speaking publicly for the first time since the team traded Hill to the Dolphins, Reid explained why the Chiefs parted away with six-time Pro Bowler. Says, quote, I love Tyreek Hill. There's no rift between Tyreek and myself. I thought he deserved an opportunity if that's where he wanted to go. He's a family man that has a few kids, and he's got to be able to support them now and down the road. And this gives him an opportunity to do that. At the same time, it gives us great compensation. We came in aggressive with a contract offer, and after we got to a point, we just said, listen, in this day and age, you have issues you have to deal with with the cap. So we felt like it was better to allow him to go ahead and be traded. You can go different routes with the player. You can play hardball, or you can go about it the way I did or we did. So didn't seem like there's any rift there uh, between him and Tyreek Hill. We'll see if there's any rift starting to show, cracks starting to show in the overall team. I don't think so, but we'll still keep it under the microscope a little bit. 
But overall, uh, Andy Reid said, hey, you know, this is what he wants. He wants a little bit more money. All right, you know, we'll abide by him. He's got a family. He did us well, so we'll do him well. He wants to go to the Dolphins. We'll trade him to the Dolphins, and that's what it was. And they ended up getting five picks. We don't love the picks. You know, y'all don't y'all know we don't love draft picks here, but they get compensation. They're going to try to build without him and try to still be as great as they were with him without him. So we'll see how it all pays out, but no hard feelings, no rift between Andy Reid and Tyreek Hill. Alrighty, keep on chugging along here. Here we go. Yeah, we talked about this one. Ron Rivera said the franchise is, quote, an easy target. I'm tired of it, but the only way to fix it is to win. And you bring in Carson Wentz, you're not going to win. So the knocks on Washington are going to still come out. Once again, I feel bad for Ron Rivera having to kind of, he may, I don't think he could take the fall because he's just a head coach and he wasn't there. He's trying to be brought in to clean up the organization. But overall, this big distraction looming over Ron Rivera, he doesn't deserve that. Not having a great quarterback, he doesn't deserve that. So, Ron Rivera, you're going to keep on losing. The organization, big-time distractions. You got Carson Wentz. He's not a winner, so he doesn't even care about winning. Ron Rivera does, so I don't know how all this is going to pan out and why he even brought him in, but Ron Rivera, mm, he's he's a little uh, frustrated with the, with the whole knocking Washington. It's not going to get any easier from here on out. Sorry, Ron, but you made the wrong decision. <coughs> All right, Russell Wilson and Jerry Judy putting in work early on here. And they were doing this shit in the dark, folks. Look at this. You can barely see out here. And they're getting work in, in the dark done. And Russell Wilson is putting the money absolutely, uh, or putting the ball absolutely on the money. Deep balls. Look at this. In the dark. I can't even see in the dark, folks. I cannot play basketball in this type of light, folks. I can't. I've tried before, and I can never get it done. But here is Russell Wilson throwing absolute dimes to Jerry Judy, and almost you can't even see it. I can't see this. Can you see this? Here we go. Let's watch his final pass. Watch this. I can't even see the ball. I can barely see these guys out here. Russell Wilson's wearing orange. Thank goodness that's the only thing I could see. Here we go. One more pass. Let it, let it, let it fly, Russell. We're not going to get one more pass? Okay. All right. Thought we got one more. But either way, the man was slinging it around. Fantastic. So, Russell Wilson already putting in work with his new teammates. You got to love it. And then we get this. Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett communicates nonstop with Russell Wilson saying, quote, we're joined at the hip. And that was a little bit of Russell Wilson, or, uh, Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll. They were joined at the hip, had a great relationship, great communication, all that. And now they're bringing that to <clears throat> uh, Denver as well with the new head coach Nathaniel Hackett, who we do like. We do like Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, he, we said he was the right choice. Offensive, innovative genius, run and pass, perfect balance. So Russell Wilson, he's getting the support from the head coach. They're in nonstop communication. He's putting in work with Jerry Judy. This whole Bronco things is going to work out fine. Folks cannot wait for Russell Wilson. And once again, he's up for recertification, so has to have a good year. And everything so far is looking all great. So, Russell Wilson, Nathaniel Hackett, joined at the hip, folks. Joined at the hip. All right, and speaking of head coach quarterback relationships, this is how you shut down rumors. This is how Brian Flores should have reacted. Yes? Yes, we get this. Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniels on Tua Tagovailoa and Tutty Bridgewater says both quarterbacks have been, quote, explicitly explained their roles and expectations. So once again, there's no doubt. Tua the starter, not the starter, backup. Are we building around Tua? Is he the face of the franchise, the franchise guy? Is he all of that? And Brian Flores was playing around, yeah, you know, Deshaun Watson's available. Meh. Tua's our quarterback right now at this minute. Meh. Mike McDaniels, no, no, no. No, no, no. I explicitly explained to them their roles. Right on the plane, the f first plane ride over, Mike McDaniels to Miami. We heard it. We talked about it on the show. Yeah, Tua, you know, you're the guy. I'm ready to work. I'm excited. Let's get down to it right here. I'm, you know, I'm going to have that open relationship. We're going to communicate. It's all about you and me, baby. And then they bring in Teddy Bridgewater. No, no, no. He's the backup. Just the backup. That's it. Explicitly explain their roles and expectations. And then we had the whole Tom Brady thing going around. Where the Dolphins trying to get Tom Brady again. Once again. Brian Flores never shut down the rumors and speculation about Deshaun, uh, Deshaun Watson coming to Miami last season. Here we go. Instantly. Mike McDaniels. He says, the Tom Brady rumors. I think that's what you'd call fake news. Fake news. Putting it to bed. Of course we're not getting Tom Brady. 
having that explicit relationship. I'm telling y'all what's going to happen. Y'all don't need to kind of guess and judge. I'm telling y'all how it's going to be. Here it is. Open, transparent. Got to love it. Got to respect it. And you must have that at the head coaching position. Love it by Mike McDaniels. Everything is looking up for this Dolphins team. I'm telling y'all. Let's keep going. Still more to talk about. Here we go, folks. Giants, John Mara on Saquon Barkley says, quote, we're not shopping Saquon, but then also has said this. Mara told reporters on Sunday that the Giants are not shopping Saquon Barkley, though he said he would not stand in the way of any personnel decisions head coach Brian Dable or general manager Joe Schoen want to make. So it's really going to be up to Brian Dable, the head coach and the general manager, whether they trade Saquon Barkley or cut Saquon Barkley or bring in another running back. I don't know if they do that yet I think Brian Dable will have at least one year of Saquon Barkley to truly see what he can do for this team and overall but uh, yeah Saquon Barkley is not a hundred percent guaranteed to be a giant next season I would say at least like 80 percent I, I, I think I could classify it as like 80 percent he will be a giant next year but there still is a little bit of a door left open if Brian Dable's like, yeah, I don't know if he's truly our guy. Let's trade him. Let's bring in somebody else. So, Saquon Barkley, we love you. We want you to have great success. We unfortunately can't really kind of get behind you 100% because we already did that this season. We had the canvas, all that. Didn't pan out too well. So, we have to move off of Saquon Barkley a little bit. Not too much. Still rooting for him, but not. he will not be a canvas next year. All right, and then we get this. This was from a few days ago, so things may have changed, but the Seahawks and Falcons have shown interest in Panthers quarterback Cam Newton. Once again, Falcons brought in Mar Marcus Mariota, maybe using Cam Newton in that kind of red zone gadget play thing, but he doesn't want to do that. So it's really going to depend on Cam Newton whether he gets back in the NFL or not. If he can take a backup role, a gadget role, yeah, he probably stays on a team. If he wants to be the starter, I think his time is done. So it's really going to be up to him. We'll see how it progresses. All right, and then once again, uh, no, did we get this? This is new. Uh, Patriots coach Bill Belichick on Matt Patricia and Joe Judge moving to offense. So they bring in back Matt Patricia. They bring in Joe Judge, who are failed head coaches, one with the Lions, one with the Giants. And uh, Matt Patricia, defensive guy before he left. Joe Judge, special teams guy before he left. But now Bill Belichick is bringing them in. Now they're talking about the offensive role. So here we go. Patriots coach Bill Belichick on Matt Patricia and Joe Judge moving to offense points to guys like Josh McDaniels and Brian Dable that moved defense to offense in the past saying quote I'm not really worried about that they're great coaches Matt's a great coach Joe's a great coach now they're good coaches great coaches not great head coaches maybe they are coaches and once again being a coach and a head coach are two definitely completely different things some guys can be a head coach some guys can't that's really all there is to it and Matt Patricia is not a head coach Joe Judge is definitely not a head coach but you know they come from the Bill Belichick tree so we know they're at least solid so now they're having a new role out here in the offense filling in for Josh McDaniels, who left to be the head coach of the Raiders, and we'll see how that plays out. He's got the tail. He's got the piece. He's going to have to get it done. But uh, Matt Patricia and Joe Judge, defense special teams guy, now running the offense of Mac Jones and Devontae Parker. We'll see how all that plays out and the, if they can adjust. All right, here we go. Mike Tomlin's personal opinion on overtime doesn't matter because the rules changed already, but Mike Tomlin's personal opinion on overtime saying, quote, I'm a sudden death advocate. I'm a traditionalist. There's, uh, says he believes there is plenty of time in the first 60 minutes to win the game. Quote, I don't fear sudden death. And that's how I feel. The overtime is not extra kind of time. It's all right. We couldn't get it done in overtime or we couldn't get it done in regulation. Y'all are tied. All right. So we kind of have to get this over as quick as possible, as fair as possible to crown a winner. That's what overtime is about. Not all right. Let's play another full game and try to run it back again. Let's see if anything happens differently this time. No, no, no. It's all right. Can your defense get a stop? Yes or no. They can't. Then you deserve to lose the game. If your defense can't get one stop, which is probably why we're here in overtime because your defense couldn't get a stop. A la the Buffalo Bills then we deserve more opportunities to have a fluke call, to have a fluke pass interference, to have a fluke drop. You need to win that way. So Mike Tomlin didn't like it. They ended up voting on it. Did he change his vote? Was he the one that held out? We don't know. I don't know. Maybe we do know. I don't know. But Mike Tomlin didn't like the overtime rule proposal change, but it got passed anyway. 
All right, coming down to a close here, folks. I see the end. The end is in sight, but here we go. Um, and once again, I want to reiterate this because I don't think this is going to work, folks. I have no confidence. I have no faith in this Cowboys team at all, folks. The Cowboys are hiring Brian Schottenheimer, the Jaguars' past game coordinator last year, into a unique role where he'll help both coordinators, Dan Quinn and Kellen Moore. Defense coordinator, offense coordinator, bringing in Brian Schottenheimer to help them both out. Once again, too many hands in the bowl here. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Uh, we get Mike McCarthy, Dan Quinn, Kellen Moore. Um, don't they got somebody else? Don't they got... Um Ah, uh, who's the man? Who's the guy from the Giants? Head coach that sat Eli Manning. <laughs> a little bit of the uh, the scapegoat so they can move off of Eli Manning. I'm blanking on the name. Freddie Kitchens. Don't they have like Freddie Kitchens on that team too? It's just like this is all the misfits that you're getting. Bron Scheinheimer who made Russell Wilson leave the Seahawks. I mean, what are we doing out here? So I don't like the Cowboys this season, folks. And once again, I am voicing that opinion. Uh, DK Metcalf says, quote, it's my time in Seattle to lead with Wilson and Wagner gone. And now we're hearing that uh, Seahawk, they don't want to shop. They don't want to try trade DK Metcalf, but I believe they are open to hearing what people are offering. So DK Metcalf trying to be the leader of the Seahawks now with Russell Wilson and Bobby Wagner gone, but he may end up being traded. It's not like 100% certain or even like anything like that, but there is a slim chance he's gone. So maybe you don't get too used to that leadership role. All right, former Denver Broncos defensive back Sua Cravens says Vic Fangio, their head coach, didn't like Drew Locke because he had a personality. So once again, Vic Fangio, defensive guy, doesn't love offense, doesn't love, you know, personalities, you know, doesn't love the explosiveness, offense. Why you can't have a defensive guy at the head coaching position? Didn't like Drew Locke because he was singing on the bench to a rap song. Personality. Defensive guys, you're a drone. No fun. No explosiveness. You do your job. Can't really do that at offense. You need the excitement. You need the offensive touchdown celebrations. You need some juice offense. Yes? How many more examples do we need of you of defensive guys not panning out of the head coach position? The NFL. Implementing more restrictions to the Rooney rule. No, no, no. It's not good enough to just be on the team. You need to be offensive. You need to be with the head coach, joined at the hip. Offense, offense, offense. Offense is the only way you can go head coach. Alrighty, Drew Locke plans to wear number two, not Russell Wilson's number three in Seattle, saying, quote, I want to write my own story here. I want to make that me. I don't want to fight against Russell Wilson. Well, you wouldn't be fighting against Russell Wilson, Drew Locke. I mean, you're not that guy. You're not that guy. You're not Russell Wilson level of talent. So let's nip that in the bud. You don't have to change your number because you don't want to step on the toes of Russell Wilson. You're not going to play like Russell Wilson. You may not even be the starter here. You may not even play at all here. I mean, that's a big old possibility. So don't change your number just to kind of be like, well, I'm doing this to be the good guy. No, no, no. Don't be like, oh, I want to write my own thing here in Seattle. Well, well, you won't write anything. You'll write a poem at most. You won't write a novel, a feature-length novel that gets turned into a feature-length film like Russell Wilson has in Seattle. No, no, no. You get a poem, a haiku. What is that, 12 syllables? You get 12 syllables. However you want to use them, or whatever the restriction to a haiku is. I know it's like seven, or it's like five, seven, five, something like that. I don't know high, haikus like that, folks. But that's what Drew Locke is going to be doing here in Seattle. You get a haiku. That's all you get. One game, one season, maybe at most. All right. Keep on going. Here we go. Ends in sight. The Bears are signing veteran quarterback Trevor Simeon to a two-year, $4 million deal. Um, solid for Trevor Simeon. We liked what he showed us with the Saints this season. Nothing great. Not a starting caliber, but solid work out there. Could be a solid backup in this league. Could help maybe one game a season to fill in and get the win. Solid work by Trevor Simeon, and he gets $4 million with the Bears. Then we get this. Bucks re-signing running back Leonard Fournette to a three-year, $21 million deal. So he's running it back with the Bucks this season. And we've seen Leonard Fournette explode at the end of years, getting into the playoffs, being very, very well in the playoffs. Dual threat ability as well. Solid catching out of the backfield at, when he actually catches the ball because he's not the best catcher. But when he does catch the ball, he's a little dangerous out of the backfield. 
So they do sign running back Leonard Fournette, and they get rid of running back Ronald Jones, which is interesting as well. So do they only use Leonard Fournette next year? Do they bring somebody else in to kind of have two backs in the backfield? Or are they going, you know, for broke on Leonard Fournette, which you can be able to do? And we haven't really seen Leonard Fournette in a back-by-himself position um, since he was with the Jaguars uh, when he was kind of the feature premier back back there. So let's see if we can get Leonard Fournette back into kind of an A1 tier 1 running back rollout here, running it back with Tom Brady, who's running it back this year. And then here we go, the final thing to say for today, folks. We've made it to the end of the backlog. We've done it. Can we get a little bit of a round of applause here, folks? We have done it. We didn't go out on any long tangent. We didn't spend too much time on one story or one topic. We just kept moving forward, said what we had to say, kept it moving. We've done it. Oh, my goodness. What a way to lift it off of us, folks. Woof. Oof, we can finally move on. But the last thing to say here, the Carolina Panthers, hands down, were the most present, represented team at quarterback, Pittsburgh quarterback Kenny Pickett's pro day. This was March 22nd. So once again, Carolina looking for a quarterback probably in the draft. Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, which two of these quarterbacks are good? Which two of these quarterbacks are better than the other? And which team gets which quarterback? That is going to kind of be what we're moving on with in the show upcoming for the next couple of days, maybe a day or two, uh, now that we've got all these backlog stories out of the way. So coming up tomorrow on the show, uh, well, Moving on forward with the show, we can watch draft prospects now, and we can focus a little bit more on uh, the basketball NBA playoff trees and how they all work out and uh, kind of uh, just walking through playoff series and games and seeing who's going to be crowned the winner and all that. So now that we finally caught up on everything, folks, we are free to move on with the show. We've gotten everything in our backlog story talked about. Absolutely fantastic. It is now all on the record. Thank goodness. Alrighty, that is going to do it for us today, folks. But before we get out of here, we have the uh, Bucks playing right now uh we took them minus six and a half and at the end of quarter number one folks at the end of quarter number one we get the bucks up 33 to 25 love it we also have the wizards plus 13 they're at the end of their first quarter as well and the wizards are down 13 points that is not good either well that's not good bucks is good so all right maybe the celtics are finally getting it done we get daniel tice in the starting lineup again yeah, Daniel Tice at the five. Everything else is the same. All right, all right. Daniel Tice, plus 12 on the floor. Eight minutes. Sounds pretty good. I'll give him credit for that. All right. All right, folks. We are out of here. We're back live tomorrow, noon Eastern. Finally watching Malik Willis. Seeing how good he is, breaking down his tape, breaking down his stats, breaking down his bowl games if he got into any of those, and talking about all of that tomorrow. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll do that tomorrow. All righty, folks, we are out of here. Once again, we got it all done. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. And we will see you tomorrow. We can move forward, folks. We can finally move on. Whew. All right, folks, we're out of here. We'll see you tomorrow. Have an absolute great one, and we will see you tomorrow.